Come on, make some Holy Ghost noise in this place. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, can we just praise him for a little while? Come on, put a smile on your face. It's all right. You in the right place at the right time. Come on, somebody shout to God in this place. Come on, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Come on, help me say, what a mighty God. What a mighty God is he. For he is, for he is the great I am. He's a king. He's the king of peace and the Lord of hosts. What a mighty God is he. What a mighty God. What a mighty God is he. For he is, for he is the great I am. He's the king. He's the king of peace and the Lord of hosts. What a mighty Come on, put your hands together right there. Woo! Come on, we declare he is a mighty God. He is a king of kings and the Lord of lords. Can we celebrate him? What a mighty God. What a mighty God is he. For he is the great I am. He's a king. He's a king of kings and the Lord of lords. What a mighty God is he. What a mighty God. Come on, celebrate him, celebrate him. Hey, yeah, yeah. How many of you know we serve a mighty God? We serve a good God. He's a wonderful God. He's faithful. And we bless him today. Come on, can anybody praise him? Hey. Come on, one more time. Come and say, what a mighty God. What a mighty God is he. For he is the great I am. He's a king. He's a king of peace. What a mighty yes. God is he! What a he. mighty God! What a mighty God is he! For he, For he is the great I am. He's a king. He's a king of kings. Yes. Lord of lords. What a mighty God is he! Wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor. Prince of Prince of Peace. Ever, everlasting Father, my strong tower, my wonderful counselor. Put your hands together and bless him. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Hey, what a mighty God. What a mighty God is he. For he is, for he is the great I am. He's the king. He's the king of kings hey. and Lord of lords. What a mighty God is he. What a mighty God. What a mighty God is he. For he is, for he is the great I am. He's the king. Come on, somebody make some Holy Ghost noise in this place. We talking about your Savior. We talking about your healer. Hey, yeah, yeah. Come on, bless him, bless him. Woo. Hey, hallelujah. Come on, one more time. What a mighty God. What a mighty God is he. For he is, For he is the great I am. He's the king. He's the king. Anybody love him today? Anybody love him today? Hey! Hallelujah! 
Anybody excited about today? Hallelujah. Hey, come on. What a mighty God. What a mighty God is he. For he is, For he is the great I am. He's the king. He's the king of kings. Come on, one more time, heaven say, what a mighty God, what a mighty God. 
from Jeremiah 18, 1 through 4. Sounds familiar. <laughs> Jeremiah 18, 1 through 4 says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my word. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Let us pray. Father God, we bless you, and we thank you, and we honor you for your word. We thank you because we have got up, we have arised and went down, come down to the potter's house this morning, expecting a word to come from you. Lord God, here we are, the marred clay, 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 the marred clay. The marred clay. Uh, ooh, Jesus. Put us back up on the wheel, oh God, and shape us and make us again. Renew and revive and restore, oh God. Replenish again. Lord God, put what you need in us again, Lord God. Lord God, those things that are lacking as you look inside of our spirit, as you hear, as you see, as you know what to do about each and every vessel that has come down to the potter's house this morning. Lord God, let it not be the same old thing. But Lord God, let it be a renewing of our minds this morning. Lord God, let us hear from you this morning. Lord God, everything that you have to say, God, we are yielding ourselves to you as you put us up on the potter's wheel again. Lord God, make us and shape us and mold us, oh God. Lord God, pull off those things, oh God, that's not like you this morning. Lord God, we want to feel your presence right now, oh God. We want to know that you're here and as you abide in us oh God we will give you all the honor and all the praise that you so richly deserve we love you God we thank you God because you didn't give up on us oh God in the name of Jesus we pray amen and amen hallelujah somebody bless him somebody bless him in this place he is good he is good oh come on bless him Come on, bless him, bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah God. Anybody come to magnify him? Come on, put your hands together. Oh! 
him the victory. The victory. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody got the victory? Hey. Victory. Hey. Let's say it again. Sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new. Yeah. New For he song. has done he has a marvelous thing. His right hand His right hand and holy arm. Has got, to him has got to him the victory. The victory. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Come on, if you got the victory, the victory. Victory. Yeah. Hey. Uh -huh. Let's call him King of Kings. King of Kings. And the Lord. And the Lord. Of Again. King of kings, King hey. of kings. And the Lord. And the Lord. Everybody say it. Magnify you, give you glory, lift you up. Come on, everybody say it. Magnify you, give you glory, lift you up. Come on, everybody say it. Magnify you, give you glory, lift you up. Come on, everybody say it. Magnify you, give you glory, lift you up
special name, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. You're great, God. Yes, you are. Come on, he's been good. Come on, come on, come on. There's a reason why we're delaying right here. Get your praise right here. Come on, think of that one good thing. Think of that one good thing that should have took you out. But God, come on, think about it and give him praise. You know where you should have been. You know where you could have been. But God, come on, come on, give him praise. Hey, come on, isn't he good? Let's get ready to praise God a little bit more. Is that all right? Come on, God. Hey, hey, hey. Woo, hey. Come on, magnify Woo. him. If you can't stand up on your feet. Hallelujah.
like. I don't care what it feels like right now. He's still good. I said he's still good. If you ain't got no money to pay the bills, he's still good. If they walked out on you, he's still good. Hallelujah. If your body is aching with pain, he's still good. Hallelujah. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. thought about it one second too long he's real good. and if Daniel was here he's real good. he'll tell you he was good when he was in the lion's den come on he's real good. Bishop said if, when the Hebrew children he's real good. was walking 40 days and 40 nights and 40 he's years through the wilderness and God was still good yeah, to yeah, yeah. Come he's, on. Real good. he's real good he's real good just think about one thing that you know it was nobody but Jesus. <laughs> you ought to be able to say he's good. <laughs> yeah, he's good. Hallelujah. That's a good place to rejoice right there. Hallelujah. The fact of the matter is you don't have enough money to pay for your praise today. <laughs> You're not cute enough. <laughs> to make him give you a free pass. <laughs> but it's something about grace and mercy. I feel Jesus in this place. That will come in the nick of time and pick you up when you feel like giving up. It's something about his love that'll comfort you in the midnight hour when you're crying all night long. Lord, help me, Jesus. He's still good. Anybody in here know that the Lord is good? The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. My God. Put your hands together right there and just give them some praise. Uh-huh. Come on. As we make this transition, somebody ought to praise him right there. He's good. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate him right there. Hallelujah. Celebrate him right there. Hallelujah. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, celebrate him. Hallelujah. I feel a turnaround in the atmosphere. I feel a turnaround in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. All the hell I had to go through. I feel it. The turnaround in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Somebody been waiting on the hood to turn some things around. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. That's not my sign. Hallelujah. But he's good. You made me see that. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. If it's any first time visitors, would you wave your hand so that we might acknowledge you and love on you? Everybody's family, come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our family here, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't forget to connect. And as God is using Bishop to bring the word on today, and you hear a word today, don't forget to take the opportunity not to sow into him, but to sow into the word that's given. Amen. It's so important to be in tune with the word that's being given. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. We all know offering is given at the end of service. Father God, we thank you. We love you. We magnify you. For this is the day that you have made and we will re rejoice and be glad in it. Now God, we ask that you would continue to usher your spirit in this place. 
Lord, that you would cause our hearts and our minds to be on one accord, oh God, Lord, so that we might move at the same beat, oh God. God, we lift up our man of God to you right now in the name of Jesus. Tell him what you want him to say, God. Give him strength, give him peace right now. Touch his body, oh God, Lord, that he might have endurance. Oh God, Lord, to give your word like he know you told him, oh God. We thank you, oh God, Lord, and we are expecting a move from you through the word of God on today. Now, God, if there's anything that's not like you, oh God, Lord, move it out of this place right now. Oh God, if there's anything that will come, Lord, to distract us from hearing your word, oh God, Lord, move right now, oh God, Lord, we ask that you would dismiss it out of this place. God, prepare our hearts and our minds to go to the next level, to be used by you in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, can you just stand to your feet? If you would, just stand to your feet to right where you are. Just lift your hands to him. And open up your mouth and just begin to speak to God. Let him hear what he's been to you all week long. Let him hear how much you love him. How much you adore him. How worthy he is to you. Lord, you are my every 
You are every cord. You are every fear. Yeah, yeah. You are my every. That's who you are. That's who you are. Just for a few moments, just lift your hands to him. Just tell him you are my everything. Come on, right where you are. If you're sitting or standing, lift your hands to him. Let him hear your voice. That's who you are. wonderful and then he's better than that he's magnificent and then he is better than that come on I ain't gonna let up until you prove that he is that good he has been remarkable and yet he is better than that incredible and yet he's better than that keep trying to find words to describe who he is and he is yet better than that hallelujah I love that song you are my everything amen come on just tap three people and say he's everything he is everything he is everything he is everything that is who you are you may be seated we are thankful amen i'm always thankful to be back home from a journey amen and so we are we appreciate god uh, for his goodness amen we um want to continue to remind you to plug in to 71441 amen and so we try to send out messages we want to become even more intentional uh, and so we're going to want you to be able to receive those on a daily basis. And so we want to just include you in that. We are um, still believing God for our, our seed, amen, our partnership seed, amen. And so you want to continue to strive to do that. See Elder Mo if uh, you need some direction with that. Um, it is time for our version of Vacation Bible School in a couple of weeks. It's called the Judas Wealth Youth Academy. Amen. And so we are looking forward to that. July the 21st through the 24th. That is Monday through Thursday uh, from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. And so uh, typically it's a little longer, but it's going to be a little shorter this year. But 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. I believe it's between the ages of 5 to 13. Is that correct? Amen. 5 to 13. And so uh, we want to make sure that you get all of your children signed up. See someone in the youth department, either the nursery or downstairs. And 
there'll be some sign-ups that you can get them in and get them registered. And so we're looking forward to a good time. We'll not have Vacation Bible School or Judas Web Youth Academy that Friday, but then that Saturday is our Family Food Fund and Fellowship. Amen. And so we're looking forward to having all of you out there for that. And that'll be July the 26th. We'll be around between 12 and noon. Amen. And you got to come get the food while the food is still there. Amen. Because folk be eating on that day. It seems like everybody fast on Friday so they can eat on Saturday. But shoot, I'm, I'm getting Baxter's portion. He don't eat no more. So I'm getting his portion. Amen. And so Elder, Elder just looking good. You're looking good, boy. You're looking good. So we thank God for that. That's enough. I'm trying. He ain't going to just show us all up. Uh, but it is, it's at the Stillwater Shelter, and it is. We have a slight change. It is at Island Park. So uh, you know they got the water stuff there for the little ones. And so bring all your nephews and nieces and them. Amen. And let them get under the water and, and just be, have a good time. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure that we get everything we need there. Uh, also, everyone that works in any capacity, food service, deacons, hospitality, we need to make sure that you make contact concerning uh, the food funding fellowship so we can get everybody on board. Uh, we're going to ask everybody to see Minister Carla just to make sure we got your names written down. We know that we can depend on you because if we can count you, then we ought to be able to count on you. Amen. And so uh, we want to make sure that everybody's there and in place doing what we need to do. Amen. And so we're thankful for that. I see one of my favorite sons is home, uh, Brother Roland Boyd. Amen. God bless you. I love you. I love you, sir. And so we thank God for you. And uh, we appreciate God for you. Uh, on that, sun that Saturday and on that Sunday, um, we have a second annual Seniors Appreciation um, the theme is Old Time Church. Amen. And so uh, we're looking forward to that. That is that Sunday night at 5.30 p.m. And dinner will be served immediately following uh, that appreciation celebration. So we're looking for everyone to come out and do that. I uh, want to mention that there is a dome meeting um, this Thursday at 7 p.m. We're asking all of those that know that that applies to you for sure to be there. Amen. Nothing's mandatory, but it's highly suggested, and so we thank God for you. A lot of transition going on in the potter's house. A lot of things will change, and so we just are getting ready for this next dimension of God's glory. Amen? Amen. And so we've been in much prayer, and so we want to present that to the team, and then you'll see it as it unfolds. Um, we also are excited. Tuesday night starts the next class of training in excellence, 7.30 p.m., and uh, I know some of you get off work around 7, 7.30, quarter 8. But we're going to ask that you just try to leave work and get straight here. If you've never taken this class, this class will be a blessing to you. It'll open up your eyes to some things. It'll allow you to see where you kind of fit in ministry. And I believe it's, it's my favorite class that I teach. And so uh, I'm looking forward to who all needs to be there and wants to be there, has heard God say that you're going to be there. And that will be, uh, again, this Tuesday and eight Tuesdays. Uh, after that at 7 30 p.m. and once we finish that class and then you move on and you can do great things in ministry and we're looking forward to having you there amen all right I believe uh, Monday is Elder Mo's birthday am I right about that July the 14th Elder Mo amen and so we are thankful for him and uh, we want to always remember those who hadn't been feeling well and uh, we want to thank everyone who was a part of the homegoing celebration for Dr. Blow. I know that was a couple of weeks ago, but uh, I wasn't here on Sunday to mention it. But uh, we're just thankful for her service and her love and her dedication to this house. And for all of you that helped uh, in that, we are appreciative to you. Amen. Uh, also, this Saturday will begin our continual Saturday morning prayer at 7 a.m. Amen. Amen. And so everyone is welcome to come to prayer at 7 a.m. Uh, each ministry that's assigned on a particular Saturday, you should know who you are. And this week we are looking for uh, Elder Butler and his entire crew. Amen. And uh, music, worship, and arts, health and wellness, food service, hospitality, beautification, and uh, the like. And so we're looking forward to that. Amen. Amen. 
All right. Also, I want to make mention to every parent, every grandmother, every auntie that has a teen uh, in high school, 9 through 12th grade. We have something here at uh, the Potter's House that we are an extension of, but it's a global uh, organization called Young Life. And so, um, amen, amen, it's powerful, powerful. I got some Young Life folk upstairs. Stand up if you're up there, they got, they got there. What's your name? Squad, all right. And so they've named themselves the squad, sanctified, qualified, unified, and destined. Amen. And so that's what they've named themselves. And so um, if you have youth in the ages, in that age bracket, ninth grade to 12th grade, you want to have them a part of this dynamic, dynamic group. I uh, took a group to, just as our, our first filler, to camp, and we had a phenomenal time. God tremendously blessed. And so we're here. We're going to have... Um, what they call campaigners and club every Monday night. Um, so we've got a kind of a, a particular schedule this summer, and then it'll be a definite schedule during the school year. But starting tomorrow, uh, we'll have a campaigners, and that's like a Bible study uh, at 6 o'clock p.m. And you want to have your children in these Bible studies because they're going to be geared for them, but it's going to open up their hearts and their eyes to the love and the power of God. Amen. And so we won't be able to say anymore that there's nothing for our young people, nothing for our teenagers. It's been going on in the Dayton suburbs for over 30 years. And so finally, the urban community has this uh, um, engagement, and we want to take full advantage of it. Amen? And then if there are any of you that love youth, that you know you are called to deal with teens, you know that's your calling, you know that's something that God has graced you to do, I just need you to make a, an appointment with me or text me so that we can get you engaged and trained to be a part of this great group. And, uh, and we're looking and we're excited about it. Our next group will be our 6th to 8th grade group. And we'll probably start that uh, at next school year. But I'm going to already begin to implement that this year. So uh, if you have children in that age group and you are thinking about getting them engaged, 6th to 8th graders, uh, we are excited about Young Life. Somebody say Young Life. All right, so don't forget tomorrow, 6 o'clock p.m., they are welcome to come to the Bible study, and it will be right here at the Potter's House, and they will get that schedule. All right, I think that's enough talking, enough announcements. I believe God wants to do something. I see somebody back there with a white face, so that sounds like a mime. After we greet one another, I know she just didn't come like that because she's pretty. She don't need that stuff on her face, but she, she got it on there, so I know God's getting ready to use her to do something great. Amen. All right, so let's just take a moment, greet one another, and, and prophesy and tell your neighbor that there's a window that must be open over your head. There's a window. There's a window. Hey. There's something on the top of your head. I see a window over your head.
just to behold his face one day, to stand in the presence of the king. That's all I want him to do is to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Take me to the Truth is I'm tired, options are few, I'm trying to pray, but where are you, I'm all churched out, hurt and abused, I can't fake what's left. Truth is I'm weak, no strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if I try, but still my soul refuses to die. Mm -hmm. yeah. One touch will change my life yeah, yeah. take me to the king i don't have much to bring my heart's torn in pieces it's my offering lay me at the throne leave me there alone to gaze upon glory and sing to you this song please take me to the king truth is it's time to stop playing these games we need a word for the people's pain so Lord speak We're chasing after you Oh, I, no rules, no religion I made my decision To run to you The healer that I need Take me to the King I don't have much to bring My heart Don't have much to bring. My heart's torn in pieces. It's my offering.
It's time to make a change. Hallelujah. up our Bibles. You can follow along with me. It's on the screen. This is the Word of God. The Word that saves and heals. It is the blueprint to my destiny today. I stand here in agreement with the truth that sanctifies because of the blood of Jesus the Christ. It is the unchangeable, the unshakable, the unstoppable word of grace. The word that redeems and releases all of my miracles. I'm not just a hearer but I am a doer I take action I will apply this word and I will manifest in Jesus name somebody shout hallelujah come on shout hallelujah like you mean it yeah we said I will manifest in Jesus name Proverbs chapter 19 verses 20 and 21 in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 11 I feel something breaking this morning I feel I feel like in the simplicity of this message I feel like something's going to break for somebody this morning this afternoon God's going to do something don't don't look for it to be in the thunder or the lightning in the still small voice of God just look forward to something breaking 
in your life, opening up a portal, or opening up a blessing, a doorway, a window of God's goodness to flow out to you. Amen. Amen. How many of you just honestly need a refreshing? You just need something to refresh you. It's not even about money right now. It's about a refreshing. It's just a refreshing of joy, a refreshing of peace, a refreshing of healing. We just believe in God. The proverb writer said, listen to counsel and accept discipline that you may be wise the rest of your days. Many plans are in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. The Hebrew writer then says, no discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's actually painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. Father, help us. Clean us. Clear a path for us. That we might see exactly what it is that you are doing in our lives. We love you. But there are some tough days ahead of us. Some shifts, some changes that have to be made in our lives. And um, we're depending on your grace and your glory. Thank you for every person that's standing here, sitting here, smiling, crying, believing, hoping, wishing. Do something special. God, we ask you for every person in this room today. Something that will just remind them of how great your love is toward them. Bless you. And thank you in advance, sir. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, tap three people and tell them discipline is a process. On purpose. <laughs> discipline is a process. On purpose. I am. Um, thankful I was reminded that um, those that are going to help out with vacation Bible school of Judas Welp we're going to see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. amen and then also I was reminded that I should have mentioned that I'm um, a part of this young life group that we are um, kind of advertising and promoting um, God has honored us and I'm humbled to be the area director of the urban Dayton young life and um, we've got some awesome people um, which was mentioned last a couple of weeks ago some awesome people who are some of the young life leaders and uh, I am thankful for them and uh, the discipline and the uh, willingness um, that they have already shown amen um, some of you know it's not always easy to work with me it's fun you eat but it's not always easy. But um, these are people who understand excellence, and um, we're getting there. Amen? So we're looking forward to that. I, it, this has been a, an amazing couple of weeks for me. I've been on the go, and uh, I don't remember sleeping until uh, maybe last night. I got a little sleep riding, and um, I always get a good nod in a car or when something's moving. So uh, we're thankful for that. But I just, uh, last night, we're well, actually this morning, just reflecting with God on uh, the last message um, that, was, that I gave from this pulpit, and we're thankful for Elder Moss and the word that he gave on last week. And so um, we, we're just sitting here. Amen. Amen. A blessed word. A blessed word. Uh, we need to represent. Amen. On purpose. And so uh, we're thankful for that. And uh, just reflecting. And just thinking and just looking and, and dealing with the news and just recognizing that uh, we've got a world just, just full of conflict. We've got a world that's full of chaos and mayhem. And uh, just looking across the water, still recognizing that we've got rebels uh, just wreaking havoc in the Ukraine and just trying to disrupt government. And how blessed it is to be in the United States where we don't have to deal with that type of situation. And, uh, our, our, the Bible tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem so that uh, it might be well with us. The, the prosperity of the saints sometimes is based around the prayers of the righteous. And so even the children and the people of Israel are asking to be evacuated from the Gaza Strip because people are still assaulting God's land. And so we, we, we've got stuff going on. We've got 
partisan debates in government where they're trying to impeach our nation our nation's leader you've got people that are supposed to be working together to make sure that we've got justice and they're fighting uh, behind closed doors and so uh, it's just a lot of things going on and then if that's not bad enough the economy seems to be going up and down and I'm not saying that it's a shame that casinos are closing but whenever you see Atlantic City begging for money uh, then you know the economy has taken a hit. Uh, the number two gambling spot in all the world, uh, closing up casinos left and right, and not because the righteous have stood forward, but because they're running out of money. And so that says something uh, to our economy. And then we've got uh, this social media thing that has arrested the hunger of the pursuit of personal growth of men and women. It's almost replaced uh, any type of personal and real and meaningful relationships rather than embracing and engaging each other one-on-one -on -one, we have reduced ourselves to a post a tweet and an Instagram upload uh, we've lost that thing where we are, are one in body and spirit and we're speaking to each other uh, through technology and just the fact that we can post something we are supposed to accept it as truth. I, I, I find it interesting, and I talked to someone uh, just on the phone uh, the other day that uh, was talking about not having the opportunity to, to upgrade their lives in education and upgrade their lives with a, a particular job, and, and they didn't have time to do a bunch of things, but then I noticed that they spent at least a couple hours a day on Facebook. Something's wrong. I, 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 I talked to a family the other day where the wife not cooking, she's not cleaning, she's not working, she, she's not spending time with her husband, she's, the, the kids all over the place, yet she's got multiple posts on Facebook. Something's wrong. And, and, and we're trying to find out why we've got such a decrease and decay uh, going on in our lives because we've turned ourselves over to a new mechanical beast uh, we, we don't even have the fiber anymore to get out of the house and meet and greet people we hide behind these mechanisms and we become something that we are not um, but society in itself has lended itself to great options and opportunities for us and I believe it's the reason we need great discipline uh, just talking to the young man who just doesn't have time for school and doesn't have time to make sure his life is better at, at a tender age of over 40 and um, recognizing that he's got some stuff that he's involved with that just needs a level of discipline. It's funny how a lack of discipline will even help us blow our own concocted goals and aspirations. Stuff that we said we wanted to fulfill in our lives, but a lack of discipline will keep you from that. Not to mention trying to undertake the onerous uh, task of doing uh, what's right. Amen. Even though we hide it behind um, what looks to be uh, as a good deed. I was uh, just reading, not hating, because I'm thankful that LeBron is going back to Cleveland. I don't have a problem with that. I think, I think that all of his reasons are right. But I was struck this morning with the thought that if he was going back for all the right reasons, why didn't he sign for more than two years? Because it's hard to do the right thing. Uh, when 40-something million dollars are staring you in the face, you want to keep your options open. Uh, everybody missed that. I'm not talking about LeBron. I'm really talking about us. Because sometimes we'll do the right thing halfway just to keep some options open so we had a verse of scripture that I, I wanted to move past but I couldn't let go because I reread it this morning and uh, about 4 30 this morning and it just it gripped me again to the point of tears verse 15 in Romans chapter 7 says in the message Bible what what I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way, but then I act another, doing things I absolutely despise. 
So verse 16 says, so if I can't be trusted to figure out what is best for myself and then do it, it becomes obvious that God's command is necessary. How many of you know you need a word from God? You need God's direction and instruction. Because just when you think you figured it out, you blow it all over again. Verse 17 says, but I need something more. For if I know the law, but still can't keep it, and if the power of sin within me, watch what it does, keeps sabotaging my best intentions, I obviously... need help when I'm putting my best foot forward but the funky part of me keeps drawing back the clean part of me and whatever I know to do right I can't seem to even get myself to even stay right once I get right I need some help he said I realize that I don't have what it takes I can will it but I can't do it. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. Watch what he says. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. I highlighted and underlined and italicized this in my own, and I see it's in some kind of special font on the screen. Something has gone wrong deep within me and gets the better of me every time. Watch this. And it happens so regularly that it's predictable. Now, now you, you, you got to just put yourself in here. Now, it, 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 don't ha it could be smoking, drinking, sex, food, uh, spending habits conversations, relationships, the man you chose, the woman you chose. Uh, it, it, it could be anything, but you keep finding yourself in this ridiculous cycle because we got something going wrong with us on the inside. And, and, and the sad part about it is if we don't check it with the word, we already can predict what's going to happen. It ain't like, look at your neighbor and say, this ain't no surprise. You, you ain't surprised. That's why normally, that's why normally we're so upset. We ain't upset that the thing went down. We upset that we let the thing go down again. We, we mad that we done got ourselves in this jacked up position again, that we done let ourselves down again. Listen, we done tricked ourselves again. Look at your neighbor and say, quit lying to yourself. You're lying. You need the word of God. The word of God is the only thing that's going to discipline us. God began to speak to me and said, there's just certain things that might seem unnecessary to your life, son, but you've got to do it just so that you can get back to discipline. There's a way that you've got to pastor. I know it's over the edge and I know they're going to be upset about it, but you've got to do it to get back to discipline because when you take real discipline out you become lazy and lethargic you become pitiful and you become wandering and once you wander you're going to begin to wonder if God is really on your side or not we've got to get back to some strict discipline the problem is we've become so charismatic and non-traditional that we've taken the rules of church out and now we're letting liberty be an occasion for the flesh and when we get caught out there we don't know how to get back so there's some stuff we're going to have to set back up in our lives if we're ever going to get to the place where God wants us because even though I, I, I do a little haterism and got haterade uh, just because I like Kobe Bryant, the one thing that you can say about LeBron James is that he didn't become the best player in the NBA because he was just doing anything. He has strict discipline. He's got discipline in his diet. He's got discipline in his nightlife. He has discipline in his exercise. He has discipline in his regimen. He has set himself up 
up with strict discipline. Therefore, he's able to reach and attain his dreams. Why are we not catching our dreams? It ain't because we got haters. It ain't because the devil is busy. It ain't because we don't know the word. We don't have discipline. That thing is closer to you than you think. You just got to start learning how to act right. business didn't fail because you ain't got customers it fails because you didn't get up in the morning like you were supposed to get up you didn't have nobody calling you you didn't have no clock to punch so you got up in the flip you wanted to get up and that's why it's not working school ain't tough because they ain't teaching right because they don't like you and they trying to see all the black people flunk school ain't right because you ain't studying you ain't putting the time in you're not getting a tutor you're not going where you're supposed to go you're spending too much time on something else it ain't they fault it's discipline church not growing because ain't nobody preaching and ain't nobody singing the church ain't going because we ain't going door to door because we not be in the church that we're supposed to be because we're not evangelizing why because we got satisfied with service rather than serving because there's no discipline everything boils down to discipline when you are putting the right things in the right place on a consistent basis and not allowing yourself to become distracted or derailed, the thing that you're trying to attain that God has you on, it's impossible to fail. And all we've got to do is just suck it up and get disciplined. Slap three people and say, you ain't even got to cry about this no more. You ain't even got to cry. You ain't even got to whine no more. You ain't, you ain't even got to fret no more. All you got to do is get disciplined. This thing ain't even got to hurt no more. All you got to do is get disciplined. You've got to want this better or worse than anything that you've ever wanted. Other than Jesus, whatever you're trying to attain, it ought to become your main issue. Let's practice something. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, not tonight, not tonight, not tonight, not tonight. Problem is, we're trying to include everything with the one thing. It says something has gone wrong deep within me. It gets the better of me every time. It happens so regularly that it's predictable. The moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. I truly delight in God's commands, but it's pretty obvious that not all of me joins in that delight. Watch this. Parts of me covertly rebel. And just when I least expect it, they take charge. You know, you know, and how many of you know that most times it's your mouth that gets you in trouble? I, I, I was on a phone call. I was on a phone call and I, I was just about to agree. I, I was just going to humble myself and agree if they would have shut up right there. But a lack of discipline, look at your neighbor and say, yeah, 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 yeah. A lack of discipline, not knowing when to hush. You had it. You'd have got what you wanted. You would have accomplished your mission in the spirit, but then you let your flesh take over. And now I've got to hold my stand because I still think my stand is right. How many of you had to deal with me when I think my stand is right? How many of you? Just a couple of y'all. If you don't stand up on that, put more than a dollar down there. I'll tell Monica what the 19 extra dollars was about. (laughs) 
or come up here and sew on me being tough to deal with and put a dollar down there. But, but, but watch, watch what that script, watch what that part of scripture says, and you got to be careful. It says, parts of me covertly rebel when I least expect it. And watch, watch how Eugene Peterson puts it in the translation. And he says, and it takes charge. Isn't that amazing? Your undisciplined, your non-disciplined areas pop up when you really don't want them to, and then they take over the areas that was disciplined in the first place. That's why, that's why you can't leave undisciplined areas unattended. That's, that's why the writer Hosea said, break up the fallow ground. You got to come back and you got to deal with the unintended areas because even though the flower looks good today, if the weeds come up, it's going to choke the flowers and now it's going to take over the growth of your flower. That which was blossoming in my life is getting ready to be choked to death. I've tried everything and nothing helps. I'm at the end of my rope. Is there no one who can do anything for me? Have you ever gotten to that place where everybody you call, everybody you depend on, either not available, can't help you or let you down because you're trying to get rescue? In most cases from our undisciplinary or our non-disciplined actions, now we need a miracle. How many people, just be honest, been living like that? You've not been disciplined and then all of a sudden you need a miracle. And I'm thankful that the only qualification for a miracle is needing one and believing God will do it. I'm glad that that's the only qualification. I'm glad God ain't got no deep qualifications for getting your miracle. But at some point, our faith isn't even strong enough for the miracle that we need. So he said, isn't that the real question? The answer, thank God, is that Jesus Christ can and does. He acted to set things right in this life of contradictions where I want to serve God with my, all of my heart and mind, but I am pulled by the influence of sin to do something totally different. And, and, and when we talk about sin, you know, I, I don't want you to just all of a sudden take yourself out of that equation because there's not some real nasty stuff that you're doing. <laughs> Sin is anything that's in rebellion to the will of God. <laughs> a lot of people take their you know, I ain't, you know, I ain't freaking no more, so I ain't, he ain't talking to me. Whatever's not the will of God is perversion. Everybody say perversion. So when you see perversion in the Bible, don't automatically go to your nasty side. It's not, it's not that, it's simply doing things opposite of the will of God. That's nasty enough. Because all of it, the Bible says there's a place in hell for every liar. So every time you done lied on the job, every time you done lied to a significant other, every time you done lied to your kids, every time you done lied to somebody else, you, you're sinning. Every time you manipulate a situation, every time you're full of pride, that's sinning. Every time you don't do exactly what God says do, that's sinning. Half obedience is total disobedience. That's sinning. Somebody say sinning. And we got to quit letting sin take the whole of us and cause us to do something totally different than what God wants us to do. And the Bible says here, thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for his salvation. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for his spirit. Thank God that he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For Christ came not into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Him that believeth is saved but him that believeth not is condemned already. I'm thankful that God has sent his son. I'm thankful that he has given us the person of Jesus Christ and he has delivered us from the power and the penalty and the penalty of sin and eventually will be taken up and will be taken from the presence of sin. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the work of Calvary, but he also gave us a practical life example. 
And in the 52nd, or the 51st and the 52nd verse of Luke 2, I read this to you. And he, Jesus, the word made flesh, went down with them, them being the earthly authority responsible for his discipline, his parents, and came to Nazareth and was subject or assigned or disposed to a certain position or lot appointed and ordained unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. Everything that he said about his father's business, she, she kept them in her heart that she might not sin against him. She understood now what he was trying to say, and she kept those things. It wasn't that it was just a secret. It's that she kept them, and she always reflected on them. Then verse 52 says, and as a particle that's given, this word, this particular particle, you could replace this particle with the words because of that. You can replace it with so then, you can replace it with therefore, or you can replace it with resulting in. So you could read this several ways. You could say, and because of that, talking about him being subject to them, because of that, so then, therefore, resulting in that, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So we find that there's this blessing about being submitted and accountable and under the discipline of another, that it's the conduit for increase. Everybody say increase. Uh, it, that means to rise, to grow, to intensify. It actually even means to fortify. Now, let me, let me qualify where I'm at right now. We started this journey uh, uh, almost uh, nine months ago talking about doing things on purpose, talking about advancing on purpose, talking about believing God on purpose, talking about manifesting on purpose, walking in our God-ordained mandate, that there are some things that God wants us to accomplish before we expire and leave the planet Earth. And so as we talked about doing things on purpose, we came to a scripture in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 2, where Sanballat and Tobiah and Gershom, they were some, some buddies, some compadres, uh, some constituents who had gotten together and recognized that the Jews were coming back. They had been given an uplift uh, not only from Cyrus but also uh, from Ezra and now Nehemiah was bringing some some uplift to the people of God and they were beginning to build the temple again and they were going to build the wall around the temple and they were going to fortify themselves and they were going to strengthen themselves and they were going to bring themselves back to a place of real worship and begin to obey and follow God again and, and, and everyone had known the history of the Israelites and everyone had known that Moses had come through the Red Sea that Joshua had crossed the Jordan River. So everybody didn't like fooling with the Israelites. They knew that he was a fire by night and a cloud by day, that he brought water out of the rock, quail out of heaven. They all knew that there were miracles going on with these people that couldn't nobody deal with. Kings were being brought down by the tens and the dozens at a time and that people were frantic about what took place with the people of God and how God favored them and how he loved them and how he blessed them and how they were children of Abraham and they had stuff everywhere you couldn't even see how far their blessings were and so now there was a concern between these three men as Nehemiah had gotten the people rallied together again to take back their city and they began to ask them these questions and they began to mock them and scoff them and, and ask them why are you even doing what you're doing and so they asked them five particular questions the first question they said is what are these feeble Jews up to what do you do why are you even making an attempt to do something that you know you failed at over and over again that's just like the enemy just when you're trying to get yourself back in line back in gear the enemy saying you failed the last time you're gonna fail this time the enemy says that you didn't make it the last time you won't make it this time and so they asked the second question they said will you fortify yourselves in other words will you secure or strengthen yourself in the thing that God has called you to do and so with that question we have been looking for things that will cause us to fortify because this particular word actually means to add ingredients to bring probability to your advancement and so we look for some ingredients and we look for some things that God would cause to add to our lives and God showed us these ingredients he showed us these ingredients in Peter and Peter began to explain to us that there were there were ten things that God was going to give us to allow us to see or seven things that God's going to give us to allow us to see what God is going to do in our lives and so that first thing was knowledge and and so we talked about the knowledge of God we talked about the virtue of a man and we talked about uh, how man's morals and how man's ethics and how man's uh, whole life of obedience has to be in line with God. And then we talked about knowledge, the knowledge of God and the knowledge of God's will. And then we came upon this word called temperance. And we began to look at temperance and its different facets. And uh, temperance meant restraint and being able to hold back from some things and not allowing ourselves to just fall off on a whim and do everything. I don't know about you, but there was a time when wasn't nothing going to hold me back. 
Amen. You ever partied like it was 1999? I mean, some of y'all ain't that old, but, but y'all know what I'm talking about. You just tear the roof off the sucker. Tell her. And so you just go ahead and do it. 